So guys, Node.js is branded as the single-threaded, asynchronous, non-blocking JavaScript runtime, right? But we've also been told that that's not entirely true because Node.js does use threads in certain situations. So in this video, I want to kind of demystify this thing a little bit and understand when Node.js is a single-threaded, this event loop that we talked about all the time, and when does it really use threads? And what does that mean for our applications? And can I utilize Node.js threading model if I really understand it? How about we jump into it and understand that? So we can start with the event loop real quick. The event loop is literally an infinite loop that runs as long as the process is running. It's a single thread that is literally does multiple checks it checks certain things like let's say there is a compute that needs to be done by node.js i don't know adding two numbers this is a compute right and then this is an execution so it will check hey do i have any compute that i need to execute do i have any function that i need to execute let me execute it and the another thing is part of the compute is essentially sending a request to say hey do is there a request that need to be sent right to to another server and here's the interesting part you can compile that git request the act of compiling that git request putting the parameters building the payload and then sending that payload that's compute that git execute but once you sent that you're effectively done right you're not going to be blocked and waiting for that response from the server. We, we, we said that stuff. We send it. We send that response. So no, we need to wait for the server to respond. Meanwhile, Node.js actually sets a callback. Say, okay, when, by the way, when we get a response from this particular function for that particular call, here's a callback and let's put it in this shelf. This is a list of bunch of callbacks. Callbacks from timeouts, uh, it's set timeout, the timeouts, call back from functions, call back from other operations as well. All of them, let's set them here. Okay. Certain operations, not all of them. The next thing, the event loop goes, okay. Do I have any callback that is ready to be executed? Did I get a response from this server? Well, no. But there's another thing here. There's another callback from a timeout that we did. There is a timer. Is this timer already ready for us to be called? Uh, no, there's like a three more seconds done. Okay, let's move on. Is there any more compute that I have to do? Well, yeah, there is like a, a some operation that you have to do. Oh, okay, let's do that operation. Okay, done. So while you're actually computing this, that is blocking operation. You, uh, the single thread, that's event loop that executing that compute, you're going to be blocked. So if you're... If you have in your code a, a while one, while true, your Node.js is going to stuck forever in the event loop because, hey, you just, hey, I'm, I'm computing. There is nothing asynchronous about this. You gave me a compute that happens to be an infinite loop. I'm going to be stuck in the infinite loop. The main thread, the main event loop is going to thread. So be careful with your compute. That's why people just like, hey, hey, let's be careful with this event loop thing. That How much compute are you putting down? All right, so now we execute this computer, we move on, and then, hey, there is another network uh, network request that we need to send. Uh, sure thing, let's do it. Let's do an uh, uh, this asynchronous network request, send it, and then move on, right? So that's asynchronous, non-blocking. So there is no blocking in certain situations, all right? So that's, that's essentially the event loop. Very simple and very elegant. We love it, absolutely love it. But there is this thing, obviously, guys, this design, as we talked about, imagine we don't have threads. Imagine just we have only the event loop. We're reading from the file, we're reading, we're doing a lot of queries that is IO. We're doing a lot of CPU intensive operation, not just like out of the box, does all this stuff. Compression, encryption, this is CPU intensive. So they take time to execute it's really hurtful to put this in the event loop because if you put it in the event loop to compress a file then the your beautiful app will suffer if i do a lot of 
read requests to, to the file system, or another popular example is DNS queries, because Nodejs is doing DNS all the time. Because you, you, I don't know, you're trying to do a fetch network query, you're trying to ping something, you're trying to essentially resolve DNS, whether, whether they are packages that you import or there are just things that you actually do that require DNS resolution to get the IP address from host names. These are expensive. We're going to end up with a lot of callback, even if they are asynchronous, right? We're going to end up with a lot of callback. We don't want to overwhelm the, th the, the main thread with these kind of operations. That's why Node.js started using a library called uvlib, all right? And this is a C library that you can just use it. It's just important to start using it. It's an application that supports threading. And here's what Node.js uses for. It uses it for two things, IO intensive operation and CPU intensive operations. So let's take an example of IO intensive operations. So here's the only, these four things are the only things that we know of that Node.js use the lib UV threading pool with, okay? And these are DNS queries. So anytime there is a need to resolve a host name to an IP, Node.js is not going to use the main loop. It's going to use a thread, and it's going to use basically this lib UV library, the built-in library that is being imported, to do this resolution. Another thing is file system. Anytime you do an asynchronous file system read, and mind that I said asynchronous because the built-in file system, you can do to both. You can do synchronous and, and asynchronous. The synchronous will use the event loop. The asynchronous will spin up a thread to do the read. So that it's just, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's an own thing. It's not bothering Essentially, it's not bothering anything. And it's, it's essentially, you can you can spread as, as much as we want, right? It's not bothering us. And the other part is uh, the crypto library, the famous crypto library. Any encryption, then it uses the libuv, uh, the UV lib uh, library, it uses the threads. So crypto encryption, uh, hashing, all that stuff uses the threads. So you can bump up the number of threads that you want to take advantage of that. Compression. The zip library uses uses the thread pool. And you can use this environment variable to bump up the thread pool number so that you can take advantage of these if you know you're using them, okay? That is what I want to talk about here. If you just bump up this number and your code doesn't utilize threads, then it's useless. And that's what I, I've, been, I've been seeing some people make this mistake. They say, oh, I'm just going to build an HTTP server and my code in the middle, they just put their code in the middle, and say, hey, my computer is going to scale because I'm going to just bump up my threads to 200. Nah, nah. You really, gonna, you really need to know when the threads are getting triggered. And I'm going to give you now a bunch of examples and uh, let's make it like a fancy quiz. How about that? All right, guys, let's take some examples. So here's the first example, example number one. We're running an HTTP server, very simple server that just return hello to the server. When we make a GET request, we immediately return hello. And matter of fact, any request that makes in the server, we're gonna return hello. What is this gonna use? Is this gonna is it, is this gonna use the main thread to execute this, or is it gonna use the thread pool? The answer is, it's only going to use the main thread because, hey, this is networking. Networking operations always use the main thread. It's never, never uses the thread pool, okay? Networking operation, except for the DNS, right? So since this is a part of the network, we're not going to use the thread pool. We're just going to use the main thread to get to execute this part. All right, so if I run this node example1.js, and then I made a curl. Let's do curl dash v http localhost one thirty three seven lead. All right, you can see that we established the TCP connection nicely. We sent the get request and we got hello back. Nicely done. This is simple. This is not rocket science. Let's take another example here. Okay, let's do example two. Now, if I run example two Node.js and I do this, I want you to pay attention to what happened. I want to do dash v curl. What do you think will happen here? Will we be able to establish a TCP connection? Let's find out. If I do that, look at that. It says connected. 
So we can't technically connect to that. We send the get request. And if I check in Wireshark, we even acknowledge the server. Let's be very specific. The kernel's server responds with an acknowledgement to our request. But the request sits in the queue of the application. So we're stuck. So we did get the request in this case, but we couldn't even respond. So let's prove this by creating another request here. Do a curl dash V uh, local host. Can I oh, let's give him HTTP. There you go. Now I established another curl request. That means another TCP connection, which worked, right? The connection we, we connected to the server. We sent the request, but this time we acknowledged it. But that request never even got delivered to that to begin with, right? So let's 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 close these two requests and and add something here so you can essentially see, right? Console dot log uh, request delivered, delivered, and then uh, all right, let's do request delivered. Let's do the same thing again. Close, uh, clean, boom, run again, boom local host you can send a run request we did a curl here we got request delivered that's the first request that's the first infinity request right so the request got delivered to the app right and we got stuck here now another one let's prove that this is actually a single thread right if i do another curl see that I established a TCP connection, I sent the request, but the request never got delivered to the app. Why? Because I did not get another request delivered. So be very, very careful what you put in your HTTP request, whether this is express or this is just normal HTTP server. If you put a huge, heavy compute here, right here, your app is going to suffer. And no worker thread pool can save you from that. It really depends what you do here. That's why that's when you need to use cluster. And I had I don't I don't have time to explain all that stuff, right? We need to go through the video real quick. All right, let's jump another example three. Example number three, DD. Okay, for example number three, we're it's a simple HTTP server, but it reads from a file HTTP.js. Just reads a file and then calls back a function, which is the console.log. So what do we what 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 are we gonna do in this case? Well, the networking aspects of this is definitely an event main loop, but remember, the execution of that work, the file, reading the file, is asynchronous, and we said any file operations that is asynchronous. We're going to use the thread pool. So now if you have it, like you're reading, I don't know, if you're building a web server and you're reading all these static files to serve it to your uh, client, then thread pool is definitely useful here. Let's take example number four. Example number four, Didi. Didi. <clears throat> so same exact thing, but we're using the, we're printing immediately the read of file synchronous. What are you going to do here in this case? Synchronous operations goes into the event main loop. So this is a blocking operation. Right? So now when the event when the event loop goes into the part where it more reads the file, it's gonna use the synchronous operation. So it's gonna be put in the event main loop. Okay. All right, example number five. We're doing a networking operation to read from Google and print the text that we comes from back from Google. What Node.js is going to use. Is it threading? Is going to use the event main loop or the thread? It's actually a combination of both because this part is a DNS query before we call a fetch. Fetch will call the DNS package in Node.js to do the DNS resolution to get google.com. That uses threading. So if you have a lot of domains, that is safe. You can do all kinds of DNS operations there. However, the network aspect of that the actual call to fetch to make the TCP uh, request, to make the TCP segment to send the, that request, to get the request, to get the back the result, that's in the event main loop because it's a networking operation. And as a result, it goes into the event main loop. It says asynchronous non-blocking because we're going to put it as a callback. Beautiful, beautiful promises. All right. 
final example here is this is how you basically utilize the thread pool. You do UV underscore thread pool underscore size. Okay, and this is the UV lib library. By default is four. Okay, and you can increase it to any number you want. Again, based on what kind of operation you're doing. So if you're saying do if you're seeing yourself doing crypto or doing encryption or doing compression a lot, uh, then thread pools are definitely very, very useful, right? And uh, you might say, finally, Hussein, how can I make, like, how can I make my Node.js, let's end up this video by the, by saying this, how can I make my Node.js actually scalable? Because Node.js is a single threaded when it comes to building a web server or a service, right? So in that case, you can use clustering. I'm gonna. What you're gonna do is require the cluster, and with the first Node.js that runs, checks. Hey, am I the master? Am I the primary Node.js app? Yes. If you are, which is the first one, you are. Then you are the master process. Then I am going to. That's a very. Um, that's a best practice to use the number of threads as the number of CPU, so you can essentially execute it in parallel, right? There is also the CPU itself. There's a physical CPU, and there's physical threads on the CPU. So, like as core CPU can have multiple threads. Those are like, again, these are like time slicing essentially. So they're not real threads. They give you the ability to give you the concurrency, right? Uh, but it's not really true parallelism and then what we do here is just loop through all the number of uh, might as well just use the actual that variable <laughs> so we're going to loop through a number of cpu and spin up n number of forks essentially essentially literally different processes right and then that process will use over the same code when it comes that it knows it's not the master right that it will go to the else and we're going to listen to the same port 1337 right and okay, that's when the first process listens to 1337, ready to take accept stuff, right? And we're going to explain what happened. What happened if I spin up another process? Another process, we're going to go with the same code and we're going to listen to the same server. You might say, Hussein, that, that's just, that's a bind error right there. No, no, no. Node.js have all sorts of hacky stuff in this function that is called listen. What they do is this function actually have knowledge whether you are a fork or a primary if you're a fork it never listens on itself it asks its parent to listen for it so the first process the first fork process will ask the master process to listen on port 1337 on that shared socket get a file descriptor and then the second process will do hey hey master do I have this lesson? You go, okay, let's just use the same thing. It's going to start hooking on the same, all of them will share the same socket, essentially. That's a very powerful concept, right? So they, essentially, this master process will will manage the mutexes and, and all that stuff so you don't get locking and all that jazz, right? Uh, there There is a lot going on here, obviously. So there is, in the UV library here, there is an option called accept simultaneous option uh, sockets. This has to be enabled, and it's enabled by default to properly do whatever you're doing right here to accept multiple uh, connection on behalf of multiple sockets. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Hope you enjoy this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.